Welcome to my video. My name is Gheorghe Rodulov and I want to show you this uh, oscillator. This is an LC tank uh, oscillator which is based on the LC tank and which is used as a load of a GM stage, a transconductor stage. Now, the transconductor stage transforms input voltage into output current. In this circuit, the output current uh, will go in the load Will be the output current of the GM stage will be transformed to voltage at the impedance uh, of uh, V out, uh, not V out. So for very low frequencies, uh, L, the impedance will be very low because the inductor will pull the impedance down to ground. For very high frequencies, again the impedance node at uh, V out will be very low because the capacitor will pull the impedance lever down to ground. Now, there is one magical uh, frequency called a resonance frequency equal to um, 1 over square root of LC. And in this resonance frequency, the property of uh, the LC tank is that its impedance sinus block is infinite. And if its impedance is infinite, we can just remove it from the circuit. Then we'll transform uh, the circuit to something real like sh what is shown here. Now, if for this frequency, this particular frequency, we choose the GM level wisely, we can guarantee that the circuit will oscillate. 1 over R. If GM is equal to 1 over R, we can guarantee that the input and the output of the transconductor stage are the same. So, um, the potential, the, the voltage at uh, 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 the output node V out will be the current output current of the transconductor stage times the impedance at V out. The impedance at V out at frequency of the resonance frequency omega uh, O is just R. Now, the voltage V out will be the current times R. And now, what's the current? The, the current is the input times the GM. So now uh, we get uh, for V out at the output of the transconductor stage that it will be V out times GM, which is the current, times R. If GM is chosen to be 1 over R exactly, R will cancel and V out is equal to V out. This means that um, uh, we can maintain uh, uh, stable oscillation because we satisfy the Barkhausen criteria for oscillations. In other words, what comes inside the loop will go through the loop and will arrive at the same point, exactly in the same uh, uh, magnitude and exactly in the same phase. And these are the Barkhausen criteria for oscillation. Now, the question is how we can implement this in practice. This is a brilliant idea, but we have to implement it in practice. A very simple, basic transconductance component is the transistor, the MOSFET transistor. However, there is a problem. If we substitute our transistor, our GM block with a simple transistor, then the drain and the gate of the transistor will get connected. And if the drain and gate of the transistors are connected, this is uh, the so-called dot connected uh, uh, device and uh, its impedance from drain to ground is simply 1 over GM. So we can then substitute uh, 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 simply the transistor with its equivalent uh, circuit 1 over GM and combine it with the resistor as uh, uh, resistance to ground uh, R in parallel with 1 over GM. At the resonance frequency we will have simply V out and then impedance to ground. So this will not work. Now. We have to find a way to take the input for the transconductance block from another place. So the LC tank has two terminals, the top and the bottom. The problem is at the bottom we put ground there, but ground is a reference node. We can arbitrarily choose which node in our circuit to define as ground, and hence to refer our signals to this ground. Now, if we remove the ground from uh, 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 the bottom terminals of the LC tank, here the L and the C are substituted with generic uh, 
impedances z1 and z2. So we remove the ground from the bottom terminal and we'll take the input for the G for the transconductance stage from there. And the ground node will define another node for the ground node. And uh, it, this node can be, for example, if you take one of the impedances Z1 or Z2, in this example Z2, you split it in two and you take the ground, the reference node, there, in the middle. Will this work? Which is called a three-point oscillator. What we have are three reactive components, Z1, Z2, Z3. Z2 and Z3 form an impedance divider and from uh, uh, in between we take the input for the transconductor stage J and we fed it to the top. Will this oscillate this loop? Let's analyze it. Now um, to analyze it we, from the closed loop we have to uh, make the open loop uh, uh, the open loop gain and uh, analyze it and see the conditions uh, for which it will oscillate for which the Barkhausen criteria for oscillation will be satisfied for this we'll have to cut uh, the loop uh, appropriate place to cut the loop is at node 2 the input of the transconductance block this is an ideal transconductance block and its input impedance is infinite so if we cut the loop at this point will not change the properties of the circuit um, Z2, Z3, Z1. In particular, will not change the current I2, simply because there is no current flowing inside the impedance and um, the I2 will remain the same. Now, if we cut the loop, we create from node 2 two nodes, node 2 and node 2 star. Now, our goal is to express the transfer from uh, input 2 star to the output 2. What is this transfer? Uh, it is easily derived and analyzed if you, if you write the Kirchhoff current law for node 1. Node 1 has three branches, three currents, I0, I1 and I2. According to the Kirchhoff current law, the sum of the currents should be 0. So now let's express uh, the currents in terms of voltages and components. I, I0 is uh, simply G times the transconductance uh, V2 star. I1 is uh, the node that you have, uh, the uh, potential that you have at uh, node 1, divided by the impedance that is to ground, which is Z1. So I1 is V1 divided by Z1. And I2 is the current that flows through the impedance Z3. Hence, we can express it as I2 divided by Z3. Now, we want to eliminate uh, V1 because uh, we want to have expression of only V2. So eliminating uh, uh, V1 can be done through the impedances Z2 and Z3. We recognize that the same current I2 flows through both. Uh, impedances. Now, this means that I2 can also be expressed as the voltage V1 divided by the impedance to ground, which is Z2 plus Z3. So V2 divided by Z3 is equal to V1 divided by Z2 plus Z3. From here, you can express V1 to be V2 times Z2 plus Z3 divided by Z3. Now, you have uh, all the ingredients uh, to substitute uh, in the Kirchhoff current law and then get an expression only based on V2. I0 is simply G times V2 star. I1 is V2 times Z2 plus Z3 divided by Z3 times Z1. And then I2 is V2 divided by Z3. A little bit of uh, very simple algebra rearrangement of the terms and now you can express the transfer from uh, v2 star to v2 so v2 divided by v2 star can be expressed as minus g times z3 times z1 divided by z1 plus z2 by z3 the barkhausen criteria for oscillations 
require that for amplitude stable oscillations this expression this transfer is equal to one in other words what goes in the loop goes through the loop and arrives at the same point exactly in the same amplitude exactly in the same phase these are the Barhausen criteria for oscillation keep in mind that z1 z2 z3 are complex components reactive components in the more generic form r plus jx so at the nominator and the denominator we have two vectors one is z3 times z1 a complex number and z1 plus z2 by times z3 another complex number for their ratio to be a real number minus one for example we require that both vectors should point exactly in the opposite directions now this is achieved by in, in two ways the first way is if z1 and z3 are capacitive while z2 is inductive and then you arrive to the copitz oscillators the other alternative is if z2 and z3 are inductive while z2 are capacitive and then you get the Hartley oscillator. And at this, this point, keep in mind what we did in the beginning with the IC tank. We took the input for the transconductance stage on the other side of the LC tank, and the ground we defined in the middle of either the, uh, the, the capacitor or the inductor. If you do this for the inductor, you have the Hartley oscillator, and if you do this ground in the middle of the capacitor, so you split the capacitor in two, you have the copied oscillator. Thank you very much for your attention.